Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Warren Center's second annual Strong Start Virtual Summit powered by Reliant. This session is brought to you by Sandy Kaufman, and we're so thankful you all joined us today. This is going to be great. My name is Lawson Gutzler. I'm the digital media coordinator here at the Warren Center. If you don't know anything about the Warren Center, we're a nonprofit organization that serves, empowers, and advocates for children and families with developmental disabilities and delays. Um, by doing that, we offer personalized therapy services for children, one-on-one -on -one coaching for parents, and providing access to resources and support to families in our community. Everyone at the Warren Center is so grateful you guys took time out of your Friday morning to join us and participate in this online event. This session is called Born to Move, Movement and Coordination Strategies to Help Your Child Become Independent from Birth to Five Years. This session is being presented by Dr. Allison Johnson. Allison Johnson has a doctorate in physical therapy from UTMB in Galveston and currently works on the clinic team here at the Warren Center and she sees three to eight year olds. Um, so welcome, Dr. Johnson, uh, take it away from here. And if anyone has any comments or questions throughout the entire presentation, feel free to include that at the Q&A at the bottom of your screen and we'll answer those at the end of the session. Okay, hey everyone. I am gonna start sharing my screen with you and hopefully you guys can all see this. Okay, so as she said, I am Allison Johnson. I am gonna to talk to you guys today about movement strategies to increase independence for your zero to five-year-old. So first I wanna start with saying children really are born to move. They're born with an innate desire to move and explore their environment, regardless of ability level. If your child isn't moving, there's a reason um, and we can get them moving. So the goals for today are pretty simple. We're just gonna talk about increasing your child's independence with movement. So we'll discuss major gross motor milestones for the zero to five-year-old. We'll talk about why those movements matter. And then I'm also gonna give you activities to do at home to increase independence and motor play with your kiddo. First, I also want to say meet your child where they're at. So we see and love children of all different abilities here at the Warren Center. So regardless of age level, work on the activities that are appropriate for your child's current abilities. So I could be talking about an activity that's for um, a three to five month old, but maybe your one to two year old hasn't mastered it. That's fine, work with your child where they're at. Um, so I'm also gonna say gross motor skills a lot. And I wanna make sure I have to find that for you so you know what I'm talking about. So gross motor skills are just large body movements that require the coordination of arms, legs, trunk. Think about sitting, crawling, walking, running, jumping, standing on one leg um, and throwing a cat and catching a ball. So why do these movements matter? One, they increase independence, right? The more your child is able, able to move about their environment, the more independent they are. With that comes a promoted exploration of the child's environment, which you know from all the research says that that's gonna improve their cognitive functioning, social functioning, and just overall mental health. It also assists in gaining fine motor skills. So fine motor skills are those things we think about like writing with a pencil, um, cutting with scissors, Oftentimes when your kiddo is struggling with those fine motor skills, there's a gross motor skill that hasn't been addressed first. Um, and so oftentimes if you will address that gross motor skill, they become more successful with the fine motor skill. And finally, it promotes a healthy lifestyle and builds endurance. I also want to say as a mom, let me be clear, I'm not telling you to do a thousand things, but it is you can make huge progress in gross motor skills with 20 to 30 minutes a day of just purposeful play. And it does not have to be every day. I know there's a thousand things um, on people's plates, but this is really um, easy to accomplish in just 20 to 30 minutes a day. So let's get started. So we'll start with talking about your three to five month old. So again, these are gonna be the skills that a three, three to five month old um, should be accomplishing. So they should be lifting up on their arms and tummy time. So they'll be starting to kind of push up on their arms. You'll see good head control. So you shouldn't see a tilt of the head to the right or left. They should have really good head control and be able to keep their head in midline at, th uh, at three to five months old. So if you're sitting them on your lap, um, they'll, they'll be able to hold their head up. They will start running, rolling from their tummy to their back. So when they're laying on their belly, they'll start independently rolling onto their back. 
They'll also start bringing their hands and their feet to their mouth. And then they'll start sitting supported with hands, which means they'll kind of see like a prop sit. They'll push out on their hands and be able to sit up just like that. So maybe in your three to five month old, you're not seeing these skills, or you want to just help promote these skills in your three to five month old or your older kiddo. Here are some really great activities. So here um, with your little kiddo that with um, the like rattles on their hands, anything that you put on their feet or their hands that makes noise will help them help them to start bringing their hands and their feet to mouth. You can do this. I do this a lot of time with just like Mardi Gras beads. You can just wrap them around their hands. You do not need um, anything fancy, anything that makes noise that's on their hands or feet. Sometimes even just putting socks on their feet um, draws their attention to their feet. This little kiddo in the mid middle here is sitting in a laundry basket um, with toys. This is a great way. He is a little bit older than three to five months old, but this is a great way to start working on like some supported sitting. Laundry baskets, you can fill the laundry basket with like rolled up socks. Sometimes that'll also promote them kind of like kicking their legs and playing around in there, but working on some supported sitting as we're getting towards independent sitting after this. Um, over here, you have this picture of this kiddo. So a lot of times if your um, child is struggling with rolling um, or bringing feet and hands to mouth, there is a weakness in like core strength. We really want to first address core strength with a lot of these things. So this is kind of a pull to sit, only you're giving them support at their shoulders versus at their hands. And then down here in the bottom picture, is um, a little friend on a therapy ball. You do not necessarily have to have a therapy ball. I will say it is a great at-home tool to do all sorts of things. You'll see it multiple times in this presentation. Um, but just working on supporting your kiddo on a therapy ball, this will also work on making sure their head is in midline um, and just overall improving core strength, which is super important for your kiddos as you're um, at this age. So now let's talk about your six to seven month old. So at six to seven months old, you're gonna start seeing them pivoting on their tummy. So they'll be on their belly and they'll use their arms to kind of pivot um, right to left. They'll also begin to sit without support. So this is when, this is really our sitting milestone and they'll start rolling back to stomach now. So really at six to seven months old, we should be rolling in all different directions. And then they'll start, especially at seven months old, they'll start holding a toy while they're in sitting. And this is also a great time um, to start side sitting. If you don't know what that is, we're about to talk about it. <laughs> okay, so before we get into rolling, some basics on rolling. These are the things you need. If your child is not rolling, it is probably because they don't have one of these skills. And so I would work on this skill. So the first one is to tuck their arms in. So the ability to like kind of tuck their arms in just like this, you can um, just work with them on that at home, kind of tucking their arms for them when they're on their belly. Um, the next one is really the ability to like transfer weight. So they need to be able to have their arms tucked and then reach. So you can put a little toy or something in front of them while they're on their belly and be able to reach um, and get it. It's a great activity to work on. They also need to be able to track and follow an object. So light up toys are awesome for tracking and following an object. Again, doesn't have to be anything fancy, um, but you really want to see your kiddo tracking and following. And then they need strength to keep their arms extended. Um, so I'll, there's an activity on the next slide I'll show you, but they need to be able to kind of go all the way up on their arms into extension in order to be able to roll over. So I'll start with that one. So um, this guy over here has his little kiddo and they have arms extended with a toy on the ground to play with. That's a great way you're supporting the child over your lap. It's a great way to work on arm strength needed for rolling. I even love, he has the toy on the ground. I love putting the toy, um, if you can even have the toy on an elevated surface like that's at eye level is even better. Um, here in the middle, I have a picture of a bunch of different toys on the refrigerator. So when your kiddo is starting to sit, another great way to work on sitting posture and help really develop that core strength, which becomes so, so important when you think about your three to five-year-old down the road, um, core strength is still so important and it develops now, like in this early time. Um, so a great way to promote that is to let them like sit and play at a vertical surface, like your refrigerator, um, anything you can like stick toys onto is great. Mirrors are also awesome. Um, and then if you see, um, or a little friend here is side sitting. So a side sit is 
basically um, where you have kind of one arm and one, sorry, one leg in front and one leg kind of behind. Um, side sitting promotes core strength and it also promotes the position needed to transition into um, basically a crawling position and be able to transition from sit to on their belly. So I love starting side sitting at six to seven months old. I will tell you throughout this presentation, side sitting um, is one of those things that if you start this now, you look at reducing things like W sitting um, and just reducing core weakness. So again, it matters in the long run for your kiddo um, to start a lot of this now and just promotes things you don't even have to worry about um, down the road. Um, in the bottom corner, you'll see this mom starting to kind of work with um, her son on going over doing kind of a transition over the leg, it's also a side sit. So again, side sitting, even if they can't side sit up independently yet, letting them lean over on one arm um, is okay. Again, we want to see symmetry. They should be able to side sit in both directions. And then in the other corner, you will see uh, another therapy ball. So again, it, the further down you move your hands on, a, on their trunk when they're on the therapy ball, the less support you're giving them, which will in turn help strengthen those core muscles more, which we need, we need for rolling. Okay, so you're eight month old. So at eight months old, they're gonna be army crawling, um, which is not up on hands, hands and knees yet, but just on their belly, they're gonna start army crawling. They will start to push up on hands and knees, but they're not usually moving in that position. And then they should be doing a sitting to tummy transition. Um, so they can go from sitting to laying on their belly. And then they will also play on their knees. So um, up kind of in what we would call tall kneeling at a supported surface, they'll start playing in that position and they'll start pulling to tall kneeling um, at a table. So here are some great activities for your eight month old. Again, that transition from sitting to hands and knees is super important. Sometimes it's really hard for kiddos. And so um, this picture at the top has a little friend um, roll over what's called like a foam roller or a bolster. You do not need anything fancy. <laughs> um, you can roll up towels um, you can do uh, like pillows, anything to kind of give them a little bit of support under their belly. Cause it is a little bit hard for them at first and then really working with them. Um, sometimes they'll need handhold assist to kind of facilitate them into the position. Um, but really working with them, you kind of see the handhold assist at the bottom corner. Um, this mom is working on kind of that, um, sit to tummy transition and back. And then the other thing that's helpful is if you put them on more of an incline surface, it's a little bit easier. So if they're having trouble in hands and knees um, and staying in that position, this kiddo at the bottom is, he's in hands and knees and he's fully on an incline. Honestly, a lot of times I just incline their hands and that takes a little bit of the pressure of gravity off of them. And so it makes it a little bit easier. It's a good way to start. And then the bottom, so if your kiddo is not army crawling, um, oftentimes put a toy out in front of them. They will oftentimes have the arm movement first and maybe need a little bit of facilitation with the leg movement. You can facilitate that. It's okay if it looks a little bit um, like janky or off at the beginning. They, not everything is super co um, coordinated. However, if you are starting to see as they're getting into crawling, they're using like one side more than the other. That is something I would definitely have um, addressed by a skilled physical therapist. So nine to 10 months old, you will start seeing your kiddo pull to stand at, at furniture and they will, they will start transitioning um, from their tummy to sitting. They will also, this is like when we say we see crawling um, and we're going to transition from back to sitting and um, also they're going to stand um, holding on to something or really bearing weight at nine to 10 months old on their feet. So I am going to make this statement. Crawling matters immensely. <laughs> um, and it matters for these reasons. So one, you will see improved grip strength in your kiddos um, and hand strength. So crawling is really important for helping develop all these tiny muscles in the hands. Oftentimes you see an older kiddo um, have a lot of weakness in their hands and they didn't crawl. Um, that doesn't mean if you have an older kiddo that doesn't, didn't crawl, that doesn't mean you can't do something about it. There are lots of activities. And I will say, do some of these crawling activities with your older kiddo. Um, let's go back and develop some of that stuff. It doesn't mean that, um, they can't develop all of that. It's just, I'm saying, let's be proactive about the crawling. It also really helps with reading and visual tracking. All of the evidence says that, um, your child will, um, have more of an advantage in reading and visual tracking because they crawled. 
he'll see increased coordination. Again, a lot of my older kiddos that I see, if they are having a lot of difficulty with coordination, oftentimes they skipped crawling and crawling is something we need to go back um, and work on. And then they're just gonna have a stronger trunk than shoulder strength from having so much movement in that four point position. You'll sometimes see some of these issues in kids that crawled for a very short period of time too. And again, um, just going back and doing lots of crawling activities, like I'll show you on this next slide. So this little girl in the yellow tunnel, she's older. And this is what I would, this is what I would say for your kids that um, did not crawl um, or maybe crawled for a really short amount of time. There are all sorts of like tunnel activities, anything you can get them in that promotes them being in that four point stance and then really like crawling forward, you will, uh, you'll see changes in things like grip strength and visual tracking. So just promote it now. Um, and this is also good for your little kiddos as they're starting to crawl more towards like 10 months old. You can start kind of, um, there's like all sorts of kind of pop-up tunnels. You can make little tunnels and forts at home, like, uh, laying towels or laying blankets over chairs and then having them crawl underneath them. There's also some really fun stuff to do to make a, make a towel. Our little friend in the middle. So if your kiddo is struggling with a uh, pull to stand, oftentimes I'll just sit them in my lap and facilitate with kind of a handhold of pushing forward as they pull to stand. Uh, and just lots of repetitions of that. And then your kiddo will usually start doing it um, more independently, um, depending on where they're at. Then the other thing in the bottom picture, the other thing you really need for crawling is the ability to be in that four point position and then reach. So if they're really struggling with um, moving forward on their arms, four point position and really working on reaching for objects, especially in front of them or at eye level. So if you can get a toy at eye level, light up toys are awesome um, that they can push and, and poke at, it'll really help. <clears throat> and then again, one of the things, this, this is a little bit um, of a milestone for your 12 to 15 month old, but this picture over in the corner that you see with the mom and her kiddo, um, crawling over something or using your leg as something they have to crawl over will promote kind of really um, enhanced crawling. So now let's talk about your 11 to 12 month old. They will stand on their own for five seconds. So they will at least be able to kind of take their hands off, stand on their own for five seconds. Oftentimes you'll then see like a lower to sit. Um, they'll be cruising. So that means that they're going to like walk along furniture. They'll hold on like to the couch and then um, sidestep over. You'll also see them hold onto the couch <clears throat> and then like squat down to pick up a toy. Um, and then kind of like that last picture at this point, they should definitely be like crawling over parents' legs. Um, lots and lots of like good crawling activities like that. Um, crawling up and down stairs, crawling over parents' legs are really good for your 11 to 12 month old. Um, so I don't have a picture of that on this, on this slide, but I will say crawling up and down stairs, um, crawling over things, all of that really strengthens um, their trunk and their legs, which we're going to need um, for walking. So 11 to 12 months old, I love playing at like a vertical surface, like this kiddo um, with the little spinner toys. Again, mirrors, refrigerators, um, you gotta be careful with a refrigerator depending on how active your kid is, if they're gonna open a door. Um, but putting anything like a suction cup toy on there that they can play with, that really is gonna promote um, independent standing and they'll end up like taking cans off. Your kiddo in the middle picture, um, they, to be able to cruise, they really need to be able to weight shift off one leg and weight shift to the other leg. So oftentimes I will even, um, this lady in the middle isn't doing this, but I will even have one foot up on one of my legs and the other foot on the ground. Like if I'm sitting on the floor with them and then really working on that weight shift and letting them play above me. Um, the other thing that's great for your 11, 12 month old is two things. So again, this little boy has a therapy ball. Um, I love standing at anything dynamic um, because that means that they are going to not have as much support and we want them standing independently. So if they're really struggling to stand independently, I'll often have them stand at something dynamic like a therapy ball. Um, push toys are fine too, as long as they're at the right height for them. Um, so, you know, you like your little push walkers and stuff, they'll stand at those. I'm by no means against those. Um, and then you can also, so the other thing this little boy is doing, you can't quite see that picture, is that you're going to have like one object over here, like maybe your dining room table chair, and then maybe another dining room table chair over here, and really promoting like putting a snack or something 
um, that they want over on one chair and it'll really promote them kind of almost like taking one or two independent steps over to um, the other chair to get them towards independent standing and walking. Okay, so your 12 to 15 month old, they're gonna transition from the floor to stand without support. So they're not gonna need to pull up anything. They're gonna usually do this through what's called half kneeling, which is where you have one leg up and one, um, and one leg up bent and the other leg is down on the knee. Um, I, you will see half kneeling later, so I'll show you a picture. And then they'll tall kneel without support. So they'll be up on two knees, um, their bottom will be up in the air, not rested back on their heels and they can like reach and play in that position. Great, really important for core strength, which we know is like tied to everything, um, fine motor down the road. They'll start squatting without support. So they're not gonna need to hold on to anything. They're gonna be able to pick up a toy off the ground, stand back up. Um, they will also, this is where for sure your 12 to 15 month old um, should be starting to take independent steps. I usually tell parents that at 16 months, um, you aren't taking independent steps, then definitely you would want to be in skilled physical therapy. Um, the world in general will say up until 18 months is normal. And I'll still say that's totally true. Um, but I would definitely get into PT at 16 months if you're not walking. Uh, <clears throat> And then rolling and corralling a ball. This is really when you're going to start to see like that reciprocal ball play where they're still actually playing with a ball with you. Um, they'll do rolling and corralling a ball and sitting. So here's some activities for your 12 to 15 month old. Um, so over um, on this side, you have a picture of a mom and a dad uh, working with a little kiddo. So again, some supported standing and then having something just right in front of them that it allows them to take like just a couple independent steps is a great way um, to work towards independent walking. If you have a kiddo that is not walking independently at 12 to 15, at really 15 months old, like look towards the end, 12, like this is a range. I will say squats, so many squats. <laughs> um, so if the more you can promote them squatting to pick up something, so that's what this little boy in the middle is doing. The more you can promote them squatting to pick up something, um, the more you're gonna strengthen those legs and the more independent they'll be with walking. Um, in my older kiddos too, that are maybe not walking at four, um, three, four, five, um, and aren't necessarily, uh, they may have a gait trainer or something, but we're also working towards independent walking without one. I will use a hula hoop in the bottom picture and I'll do this with tiny kids too. I'm with my one, my 12 to 15 month old too. Um, you can have them stand in the hula hoop and you stand in the hula hoop and hold on and kind of like walk as they're holding onto the hula hoop instead of you. Um, it's more independent. You can also hold one end of the hula hoop and they can hold the other end of the hula hoop and work on taking kind of you back stepping and then walking towards you. Again, that's more dynamic than them just holding your um, hands and will and lead to more independence with walking. The other thing I love is a toy. So this other picture, um, this kiddo is holding onto a toy with both of her hands and then I'm holding onto it with one hand. I'm giving very little support on that toy, um, but oftentimes, especially in your older kiddos, that maybe have um, different diagnoses, or anything going on, they will be a lot more hesitant about walking independently. Um, and so giving them a toy or something um, to support them, but like not giving them very much support is a great way to work towards independent walking. All right, so let's talk about our two-year-old. So at two years old, we get into like really fun stuff. Um, they're gonna start jumping with two feet. There's really no, reason to have like a jumper, any sort of jumping toy until two years old. This is when it's like developmentally appropriate. They will walk up and down steps with help. So they're usually going to be holding onto a railing or your hand and going up and down steps. They will kick a ball and they will toss and roll a ball. They will also stand up on their tiptoes. Um, and then they will also start doing um, walking backwards. So some great activities for your two-year-old. Um, in the middle here, um, one of the best things to kind of work on like strengthening calves, the reason we want them to come up on their tiptoes is because it promotes jumping. And so if you have a kiddo that isn't jumping by like 25 months old, <clears throat> that's when I'm like worried about it. Um, then you really make sure you've kind of like honed in on the skill of going up onto their tiptoes. So I'll put like sticky notes or anything fun on the wall to pull off and they can pull those down. They have to go up on tiptoes. It's fine for them to be supported on tiptoes. Um, I will progress to like holding a toy or something in the air where they're not supported, but especially right at two supported at the wall. 
I also think mini trampolines with arm support are great. Um, I know that that is logistically not pop possible for everyone. Um, so there's other options too. Holding on to hands or holding on to a support surface while um, putting them on something soft or bouncy really promotes bounce, um, jumping. So oftentimes I'll even have kiddos like roll up balls of Play-Doh and put them under their hands on the table in front of them. And then um, they can be on something soft like a, a couch cushion and they push through their hands to smush the Play-Doh and that will help them push down through their hands, which helps them go jump up on or go at least onto their toes on their feet, uh, which is an easy thing to do at home too. And then walking backwards. So promoting walking backwards is really good. It helps strengthen um, muscles on kind of some of the back um, and uh, different leg muscles too, and just promotes balance and coordination. Having them drag like a laundry basket with things in it. There are all sorts of like pool toys you can buy that have strings on them, but really you can tie a string onto something or anything and um, just have them drag along that point. Okay, so for your three-year-old, three-year-old, three wheels, we think about um, that's when they'll start pedaling a tricycle. You'll also see your three-year-old, um, they have like normal arm strength, they'll start to open, open doors at this point. They will also throw a ball overhand and attempt to catch a large ball. They don't have to catch it, but they should be attempting. They'll walk in up, up and down steps with one foot per step. So instead of putting two feet on each step, they'll have one foot. And then they're gonna walk on their tiptoes. So this is a gross motor milestone. I will say though, if they're doing that more than 80% of the time, um, it is a concern and needs to be addressed. I will talk about it a little bit more at the end and you can ask questions if you want. So activities for your three-year-old. I love balloon play for a three-year-old when you're working on throwing, tossing and catching a ball. Um, balloons are great because um, they have a little bit of drag on them. So they're gonna go slower. So it gives time, uh, kiddos a little bit more time to react. Doesn't mean that if, if they're not struggling with that skill, they'll probably do fine with the ball. But if they're struggling a little bit, balloons, they're awesome. Play with a balloon if you're with your three-year-old. Um, so the kiddo at the bottom in the middle, she is half kneeling. So half kneeling is such a great position. They can start doing it at one year, at one year old, um, when they're like at a support surface, it's what they need to be able to do to come to standing independently. But I oftentimes prescribe half kneeling as an activity for my families to do at home at two and three years old, when I'm seeing like decreased coordination, they're really struggling with some of these skills that a three-year-old should have going up and down stairs, standing on one foot, half kneeling. If your kiddo is struggling in those areas, half kneeling, they just I let them play, let them try to play a support surface and then progress to not holding on to something like she's holding on to something in her hand um, to play. And I love like holding a puzzle, having them do a puzzle um, or something like that. We are also working towards at, at three years old, um, you're, you're really working towards being able to stand on one foot and um, you need that for going up and down stairs with one foot per step. So like this, um, this boy in the bottom picture, he's working on like stepping over obstacles. Again, you don't have to have anything fancy, but if you can make like an elevated obstacle for them to step over, it's a great activity for your three-year-old to promote independence of stairs um, and to also work towards um, standing on one leg independently. And then at three years old, um, you are jumping for sure. So I love, um, I love setting up little jumping um, obstacle courses with painter's tape. You don't have to have anything um, special, but you could just tape along different things on the floor to promote independence with jumping. And it's an activity you can just set up and like let your kid do for a while. They're usually really um, happy to do that for a little bit. Okay, so your four-year-old, they are walking up and down stairs without a rail. So this is the point they don't need to hold on. Um, they should be able to go up the stairs one foot per step without holding onto a rail. They will stand on one foot for five seconds. They will also start to be able to hop on one foot. And then they will, you'll see them start to swing independently at the park. They can swing in a swing independently. And then definitely by four, your kiddo should be able to catch a bounced ball. So they're reacting quick enough that they can catch a ball to them. Okay, so if some of those things are hard or you just wanna promote some of those things in your four-year-old, a great way to promote standing on one foot is to go ahead and give them something under one foot that's dynamic. So um, this friend in the top picture with the ball underneath one of his feet, that's a great way to promote single leg stance. You can be like playing a game with them while they're doing that, um, like throwing and catching a ball. If that's too much, you can just be holding like a puzzle or something in front of them. You can even just set something up so that they're um, 
they're just standing like this and watching TV. Like, um, it's a great way to just work on um, promoting that. I also love, so in a lot of kiddos, if they're struggling with these skills, there's either weakness in the feet or low, low muscle tone. So in this bottom picture with the marbles, what he is doing is he's going to pick up those marbles with his toe and drop them in a tray. Bonus points if he basically crosses midline into that tray. Um, depending on where weakness is in the feet will depend on where I put the tray. Um, but that is a great activity for those kiddos. If your child is struggling with the stairs, oftentimes I'll give them a visual cue. So these are little footprints here in the middle on the stairs. You can also, you can, again, use blue painter's tape, put an X on the stairs. Again, most people that notice kids having trouble with stairs have stairs at home. Um, if you have them out in the community, this might not be as realistic for you. Um, the next picture is probably a better one. So the next picture is just a small step. Um, this this child even has a support service in front of them in case they need it. Um, but they're just gonna step up and step down. Uh, and then you're just working on increasing independence. Putting one step in front of them is so much easier than having them go up a flight of stairs. So start with one step. Okay, so our five-year-old. So they will stand on, a, on one foot for 10 seconds. They should be walking up the stairs and now they should be able to hold an object while they go up the stairs. Again, one foot per step, they don't need a hand row. They should be able to kick a ball to a target. The, your five-year-old is jumping in all directions, up, down, side to side, on one foot. Um, we're looking at they can do jumping jacks. Uh, all, of, all of the jumping skills should be there at five years old. You'll also start to see galloping, um, and then they'll also be skipping at five years old. Sometimes your five-year-old will still need demonstration of skipping. Um, I know as boys still really need demonstration with skipping um, at five years old. That's totally normal. Um, but this is where you definitely kind of say, okay, this is where we have this skill. So for your five-year-old. So things I love for a five-year-old. Um, in the bottom picture, so if you have a kiddo who is really struggling with skipping, sometimes it's a coordination issue. Sometimes it's an issue with like crossing midline or um, alternating um, one arm and leg. So I like activities like what the boy in the bottom picture is doing where he has, he's working on one arm in front, holding it with one leg behind him. Um, though it's not like, it doesn't look like skipping it, doing that skill will help him be able to skip. Same thing with the boy in the middle. He's actually can't kind of see his feet, but what he is doing is similar to what I was talking about the four-year-old doing is basically standing on one foot. And if you have, you can put a bean bag or something on their other foot and they're like lifting it, crossing midline, setting it on the other side. Crossing midline is really important for skipping and being able to coordinate opposite arm and leg movements, um, which you need for a variety of different things in life. Um, but you'll see, you'll see issues with that in the classroom and you'll see issues with that um, sometimes in fine motor skills if that's, if that's a struggle. So your five-year-old, I would do that. I love setting up, again, you can use blue, blue painter's tape, um, hopscotch, you can use chalk. I love this little kiddo with the rings on the bottom. I love setting up anything that they can do to promote um, alternating jumping. So if you're jumping from feet apart to feet together, feet apart, feet together, or hopscotch where they're truly going two foot, one foot, two foot, one foot. Find things out in the community that are great. Um, Five-year-old like working on walking um, on top of a curb. This is a like tree stump, but anything they can kind of do to work on balance with a more narrow base of support. So now that we've kind of talked about all those things, <laughs> I'm gonna give you a couple, two little like caveats here at the end. So some things that decrease independence that we want to keep an eye out for in your kiddo. As I mentioned before, so up on the toes, more than 80% of the time after the age of two, um, when they are like a significant walker, they have been walking independently and they're on their toes more than 80% of the time, uh, will decrease their independence with movement. So it's really something we want to address. There are multiple reasons that kiddos are toe walkers. Um, so I think it's best addressed by like a skilled physical therapist. If you want to ask me specific questions, I can. Usually it's either sensory in origin um, or it's related to muscle tightness. It can be um, what we would say idiopathic. Like there's not necessarily a reason, but in my opinion, there's most often a reason. Um, and that can be addressed with if it's sensory, we're going to address it with sensory integration strategies. If it's orthopedic in nature, we're going to address it with strengthening um, 
of the muscles in the front of the leg. Um, and like I said, I can't tell you everything. I could do a whole, I could do you a whole lecture on toe walking, but you also want to look at your kiddo's feet. So if you have a three-year-old who's really struggling with jumping, take a look at their feet. Um, I love kiddos barefoot um, from like zero to two as much as possible. Obviously they're going somewhere, daycare, or out in the community, they're wearing shoes. Um, but barefoot helps that little arch develop. But if you're not seeing an arch um, by between two to three and they're really flat footed, um, which is what these top pictures are showing, they're showing you like mild um, to moderate to severe pronation of the foot. Oftentimes, just getting them in the right shoe or even an orthotic can ch change their ability. They will all of a sudden, the right shoes have taken a kid from not being able to stand on one leg to standing on one leg to 30, 30 seconds. Um, oftentimes, it's just their feet. Um, kiddos' bones and their feet are still developing up until the age of between seven to nine. And so if you aren't seeing an arch at two, three, you can still help change the development of your kid's foot until seven. And so I really, really advocate for, take a look at your kid's feet. Um, then W sitting. Um, so this like sweet friend here, again, why I like harp on start side sitting and start core strengthening early um, is because this is harder to address the older they get. However, if your kiddo is W sitting, um, it's fine for them to go in and out of that position. That's totally normal. But much like toe walking, if they're in that position as their preferred position, um, it will hinder gross motor development and movement. So we really want to address that. I would go ahead and obviously, like if they're older, you can kind of talk to them and switch them out of that position if they have the understanding to be able to do that. Um, really working on a lot of like core strengthening activities is also helpful. I would have them in skilled PT for sure. And then our little friend at the bottom. Um, so the other thing that I think high muscle tone, um, like if your child has a cerebral palsy diagnosis, um, oftentimes they have spasticity or high muscle tone. That that doesn't that doesn't get missed, um, and you're usually being told how to address that. I think low muscle tone often gets missed, and so my friend here is kind of your picture of what a kiddo with low muscle tone looks like when they're sitting. Um, just everything is not very tight and it's really hard. So low muscle tone can also be a reason that your child is having trouble with movement. Again, it'd be something to have addressed by a skilled physical therapist and I could do a whole lecture on it as well. Okay, so then my last kind of caveat here is have the tools to move. I'm a huge proponent of if your kiddo needs equipment and we can get them equipment that allows them to move and be more, more independent, let's do it. Um, so um, this little girl here has a gait trainer. Again, if it is taking them from not being able to walk to walking, and again, I'm talking about older, like you have a two to three year old that is not walking, um, has some sort of diagnosis, and we know that like walking is going to take a little bit, we can start with a gait trainer. I'm not saying that's the right thing for every kid. You're going to talk to your physical therapist and they're going to help you make the best decision. But orthotics are another thing. Again, you can take a kid from not being independent with pull to stand, not being independent with some of these things, especially your older kiddos to being independent with standing, being independent with pulling to stand just by giving them the right braces. Um, again, you'll have to go through usually a physical therapist for that. Um, and then my final thing is good shoes. And so I will give you this very short, I could also do a whole extra on shoes, but I'm gonna give you this very short demonstration of what we're talking about for a good shoe for a kiddo um, when they're getting into shoe wearing, especially if you have low muscle tone. So when you're looking at your shoe, your heel cup should be firm. So if I push on it, it's not collapsing in. Um, when you try to bend it, it should not bend in half. It should just bend at the toe, which means it has enough arch support. And when you look at the bottom of your shoe, it should have a straight last. It should not be curved. And then um, the top straps um, or ties so that they can stay on their feet the best. Okay, so just some really great resources for you guys. I will say, um, if you have not checked out um, Kin Active Kids on Instagram or on their website, they're a great resource for some just at home stuff to do. Um, the blog at dinopt.com also has great resources. A lot of the pictures I used um, are from her because she just has excellent parent resources for how to do things at home. Um, and then there's just kind of a list of where I got some of the pictures from. So that is all I have for you guys. Does anybody have questions? 
And if anyone has questions that they want to type out, you can also type it in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. Phonetically, it's Bob. All right, it looks like we don't have any questions. So thank you so much for attending this session. We have another session at 11 a.m. If any of you guys would like to, to attend that, that is called It's More Than Words, Helping Your Child Communicate Through Every Stage of Development. Um, just go back to your SCED account or the warrencenter.org slash strong start to sign up for that session. And if you missed anything from this session that you wanna, wait, we do have one question. Can you explain who the show should be again? Do you understand that question? Say it again. Is it about a shoe? Yes. How the shoe? Like what the, you want me to explain what the good qualities of a, of a good shoe again, maybe? Yes. I believe that is what this guest okay. is asking. I will. I, I kind of rushed through it. Okay. So when you look at your shoe, you want to have a firm heel cup. So the heel cup is this back part, right? So if you push on the heel cup, it should not collapse in. If your heel cup collapses in, it's not firm enough. Um, the other thing you do is you want to look at the bottom of the shoe. So most shoes, tennis shoes will often, they'll have a straight last, right? So it should be straight. If it's curved, so if this shoe went this way, um, that's not great. <laughs> so I would stick with a straight last. And then when you look at your shoe, you can oftentimes look inside of the shoe and you can see that it has arch support. Um, but basically, um, if you bend, try to bend the shoe, if you try to bend it in half, it should not bend in half. If your shoe bends in half, which means like it bends right here would be bending in half. That means it doesn't have enough arch support. Um, so especially for your kiddos that have low muscle tone or have over pronated feet, um, they really need arch support in the shoe to help those bones develop correctly. And then, um, also just because kids shoes, um, and kids, all kids feet are different. I really like having at least a Velcro strap here or ties. I think Velcro straps are easy for my child because obviously he's two and can't tie his shoes, but, um, <clears throat> but Velcro straps or ties will allow you to adjust how tight it is around their ankle and gives you a better fit for the shoe. Answer your question. Awesome. I think that was a good explanation. Okay. Like I was saying, if anyone wants to join the 11 a.m. session that is on um, communicating, so a lot of words in child communication, if you want to join that, we have great presenters for that one too. Um, so yeah, thank you, Dr. Johnson, for explaining all your knowledge with us this morning, and thank you all for joining uh, the Strong Start Virtual Summit. Thank you.